My name is Aminash Pandaria. You can follow me on Twitter at Hartha. I love JavaScript and PHP. So let's see. So as Crawford says, JavaScript is the world's most misunderstood language. And I agree, it's very confusing. And secondly, when we use JavaScript with WordPress, it gets more confusing. Because we have PHP, we have JavaScript, and then there are some best practices that we have to use with WordPress to make things easier for us, for the developers. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. I call it JavaScript and WordPress. So let's see. First things first. Is it really important? Is JavaScript that big? This language is created in 10 days. Seriously. JavaScript is used by more than 92% of the websites today. More than 80% rely on JavaScript for important functionality. So if you disable it, the site is not usable, not at all. It's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. It runs on my mobile phone, my laptop, your tablets. Nowadays it runs on the server too. It can make your site really slow. We have seen that. We've seen that happen. Sites go really slow. You keep, you get into a loop and it never ends. It can make your site unusable. As I said, one mistake and you're gone. Well, I'm convinced we should know a lot more about JavaScript, the language, use it properly with WordPress. So first I'm going to talk about some differentiating parts of JavaScript, some quirks some basic ideas that make JavaScript different from any other language. So first, the var keyword. So in JavaScript, whenever I instantiate a variable, for example in this case, I instantiated a variable a equals to 5 in the global scope, and then I create a function where I again reinitialize the variable a as 3, a equals to 3. And then, now when I see the value of the variable within the function, it's 3. Fine. But then when I want to see the value of variable in the global scope, even it has changed to 3. It doesn't happen. It should not happen. This is wrong. How can we overcome this issue? Well, we have to use the var keyword. So when we use the var keyword, the value of the variables are bound to the scope of the function. In this case, now a is 3 in, inside the function. And in the global scope, it's 5. So good. So first thing, we have to use the var keyword. It's really important. Uh, there's a basic idea that we should never miss the var keyword. We should use it whenever we initialize a variable. And we should initialize a variable. Second thing, hoisting. So in JavaScript, it's a dynamic language. We all know that. And then I can instantiate a variable anywhere within the code. But what happens is, there's some magic that JavaScript does, which is, it moves the instantiation of the variable, just the instantiation, to the first line of the code. Well, what do I mean? Let's see. Uh, over here, I have a very simple function that just outputs the value of a variable. In this case, it's namaste. It's understood. When I instantiate a variable after the console.log as ola, now it gives me undefined. So this is hoisting. So in this case, JavaScript automatically adds a line of code as var val equals to undefined and then the third line ends up being val equals to ola. Yeah, let me repeat. Wherever I define my variable, the initialization will be hoist to the top. This, well, this is very confusing in JavaScript. Very, very confusing. Had it been any other language, Ruby, uh, Python, this would be the object. That's it. As simple as that. It's very confusing in JavaScript. It depends on how the function is called. It also depends on the owner of the function. What do we mean? Let's see. If I have a simple function as what is this, then in this case, this refers to window. Because in the browser, window is the global object. So as we can see, it depends on the owner of the function. In this case, it's owned by the root or the global object. Now in case of a simple object literal, so I have defined an object literal with a function and I call it as this object dot this function. Whenever I call it, this is now the object because it's owned by the object. Now, JavaScript tries to act very classy. It's not in terms of classes and objects, but it tries to. So 
here I create a simple function as word camp and I define this dot here as the year, the value passed and yellow is a very simple function which just says yeah it's word camp and the year passed and then I create a new object out of that and I call that function. In this case, this now uh, is refers to the new variable or the new object that has been created WC2012. This is fine. But then there is a whole school of thought within the JavaScript community that we should not use new. Why? Because just missing that new keyword will give a very different meaning to all of this. Let's see. So I intentionally missed the new keyword this time and then I call the function WordCamp2011. So now when I refer to WordCamp2012.yellow, it's undefined. Why does that happen? It's because here it's as good as me calling the function in the global scope. I'm not creating a new object. So eventually this function goes to the global object because this refers to global. And there's one more uh, idea that whenever we create constructors, the name of the variable should start with a capital letter so that we know it's a constructor and not a very simple object. Functions. JavaScript is a very functional language. It gets its functional side from scheme. Okay, what do you mean by functional language or first class functions? Uh, so, if I can uh, declare a function, if I can create functions without name or anonymous functions or lambdas, and if I can pass functions to other functions, then it's a first class function. So, we can declare functions, we can create function expressions, that means I can just uh, give the function to a variable, I can pass functions, in this case I'm passing the function console.log, I can create functions without a name, lambdas or anonymous functions, so that is a very basic idea of some of the quirks in JavaScript, the most important quirks, there are others, but these are the most important, now let's just put our knowledge to practice. So what would be the output in this case? I have defined two functions, bar, bar two times, and then I have written the value of bar, whatever the uh, function returns. What would this output? 8. Now, instead of a function expression, declaration, I am using a function expression. What would it output in this case? It is 3. Why? Because in this case, the variable stays same. But in this case, the whole declaration of function is hoisted to the top. Now, a little confusing example. So over here, what I am doing is, I have a function that returns 10 functions. So it creates 10 function. Each of those function create 10 function. And then I just try to get the output of those functions. This would give actually 10 tens. What were we expecting? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up till 9. So this happens because over here this function, uh, result.push function, we are just giving the uh, return as return i. And at the end of the execution, the value of i is 10. So each of the values are 10. Uh, how do we solve this? So the base, simple idea to solve this is, we should just create a, a wrapper, an empty box around that function where we can say like the for the first function i is 1, second function i is 2 and so on and so forth. How can you do that? We can use closures. So we can see I have created a function where I have passed the value of i and then this function returns another function. So the inner function has access to the value of the outside function, outer function. So this is known as closures in JavaScript and it's a very highly used concept. So now yeah, the output of the values are right, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up till 9. Yeah, so that was all about JavaScript. Now let's talk about WordPress. How many of us have done this? Should we do this? So I'm just like inserting script script tags via echo. Just echoing them. Well, please use helper functions. So WordPress gives us number of helper functions like register script, deregister script, nq script, dq script. The register script is like me trying to say, WordPress, remember this script for me. I'll require it later. It has five arguments. The first is the name of the script, how I'm going to name it later. 
the source of the location of the strip? Dependencies? Does it have any dependencies? Does it require jQuery? Does it require move rules? Uh, the version? And should we place it in the footer or the header? An example. So over here, I am just uh, creating a very simple script as custom.js. I am naming it as my theme custom. It requires jQuery. It's version 1 and please load it in the footer. There are a couple of things that we have to remember over here. First thing, we should always use these as functions. Get template directory URI for templates and plugins URL for plugins. Why? Because if we hard code, most of us have very different WordPress configurations, very different folder structures in WordPress. And if we don't use this, we just hard code dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash plugins, then it will go really wrong. And there are lots of predefined libraries in WordPress like jQuery, MooTools, jQuery Form, jQuery Color, and lots of them. D-register script. Uh, I can use D-register script to tell WordPress, forget about this, I don't need this anymore. NQ script. Okay, so WordPress remembers my script. How do I put it in the page? I need to load it. So that is done by NQ script. It again has the same five arguments. If I have not registered it, I can just give those five arguments. If I have registered it, I can just give the handle and I'm good to go. So example, uh, we know how to deregister a script, we know how to register a script, and we know how to NQ a script. So what we can do is we can dequeue the jQuery that comes bundled with WordPress by default. We can load it from Google CDN because it's fast. I don't want to waste my bandwidth. And then I can just NQ it. So these simple three lines of code can actually remove the bundled jQuery from WordPress, put in CDNs. And I don't have to change any core code for this. DQ script is just the opposite of NQ. I can just, uh, let's say there's a plugin which adds lots of random JavaScript files and I don't want that to happen. I can just use DQ script and it will not be added to the page anymore. This is an example which shows us the power of uh, the dependencies. So let's see, I have one JavaScript file known as flex.js and then I have another JavaScript file known as slider.js. Slider.js requires flex.js and flex.js requires jQuery. So if I just NQ the slider.js, in the end WordPress will do the whole magic for me. It will load slider.js, flex.js and jQuery all at once, just one line of NQ. So this is a very good way of handling dependencies. Localized script. So uh, how many of us have echoed JavaScript from like within PHP? We have done that a lot of times. It's hard to manage it. It's really hard to manage it. And just to solve that problem, we have localized script. How can we use it? Well, it has three arguments. The handle, the handle of the script. So let's say I have a script in the earlier case, slider or JS. The handle is home page slider. And I have a couple of variables, variables that I want to send to the script. So I'll just give the handle of that script name, the object name, how I want to refer it from JavaScript, and the variables. So what, uh, what WordPress will do is, whenever that handle script is added to the page, and queued to the page, then only it will put those variables. If you don't have that script, the variables are not required at all. A uh, very simple example. This is a little vague example. <coughs> For example, I have a string, a value, two values, a PHP array, and I just send them to um, JavaScript as uh, object name. Later, I can uh, get them in JavaScript as object name dot some string, and it would give me the localized version of some string to translate. And this localized script is used a lot. I found one example in catch themes, simple catch. So what they do is, they are sending all the values to the sliders using localized script. Because if you are creating a theme for WordPress.org, they don't like you echoing JavaScript all over the page. If you do that, your theme will mostly be disqualified, they will not accept it. If you use this, there is a higher chance of getting accepted. Okay, Ajax. We have done this. A number of times. We used to do this. 
this was the Brahmastra for us, for Ajax, wasn't it? But yeah, please don't try this at home. What we have to do is use the WP Ajax action hook. So, a very simple example, I have a jQuery Ajax call to the page myajax.ajax URL which I have given it from the localized script. So generally all the Ajax requests would go to uh, wp admin slash admin ajax or php I suppose. And then yeah so I am sending a data to the uh, script, php script and then I have given the action as add foo bar. And whenever I get a response just alert it. Now what do I do in the server? I just add this function. I hook a function to wp ajax add foobar, add foobar is my action and it would call this function prefix ajax add foobar and yes we can just do the magic over here. So this is the simplest easiest way to do ajax in wordpress. Why? So there are lots of helper functions and uh, lots of good functions but why do we use them? Why shouldn't I just echo it? Couple of reasons, better management. And then second thing, the most important thing is it's easy to write code. It's really hard to understand it. It's really hard to modify it later. So if you use this helper function, then later once I write a code, one of you can change it. One of you can just say dq my script and nq my script. It's as simple as that. Otherwise you'll have to get to the core, change core files, which is not really bad. Because later when you upgrade it, update the files, well, your changes will be gone. So summing up, we should always use var. This is very confusing, but once you understand it, it's really powerful. Functions, JavaScript has really good functional awesomeness. We should use functional constructs. That is how underscore JS, backbone JS are working these days. And then please use WordPress helper functions. Please, please do that. What next? We can read about this strict mode in JavaScript. We should always use strict. Then most of the ports in JavaScript will just go away. We should know more about closures. Once again, functional programming. There are lots of more quirks in JavaScript, which can be a boon if we know about them. We can use them <coughs> properly. There is a whole website dedicated to it named as JS Garden, JavaScript Garden. Please go make something awesome. You have the power of WordPress. Now, uh, thank you for coming to WordPress Nepal.